Deterrence is just something that essentially large entities express toward another, um, countries against another, one country against another. Uh, and the idea of deterrence is a threat. It says, if you do something, whatever it may be, that I really don't like, I'm going to respond in a way that you really won't like, and so you better not do it in the first place. Now, in the nuclear world, which is where deterrence is particularly at issue, it's not deterrence by denial. We don't have any way, really, of preventing someone who wanted to attack us with nuclear weapons, say, from doing so. We really can't stop that right now, um, and maybe never will be able to. But what we can do and do is deterrence by punishment. That is, we say, okay, you attack us, we're going to blow up the world, essentially. We're going to blow you all up and everything will be done. Um, now that, in a sense, seems like um, a reasonable threat, <laughs> it, uh, uh, except if you consider a few things, not least of which is what's the effect if you do wind up blowing up the world. And secondly, all the um, skeletons in the closet of deterrence. There are a, a whole array of problems with deterrence that, as with some of these other situations where a, a threat leads to a negative effect, I fear, and I think the evidence is overwhelming, that nuclear deterrence itself is enormously self-defeating because of all the dangers that it itself evokes. Now, credibility, if you think about it, is really fundamental to any threat. If a threat is to work, then it has to be taken seriously by whoever is being threatened. Okay? Um, and so parents, again, have to worry about credibility. You don't want to threaten something that you're absolutely unlikely or unable to carry out. It, kids are not dumb. They'll, they'll know that. So let's take a, an example of a, interacting a parent and a child, but with very real consequences, a real significance for nuclear deterrence. So let's say your child is not eating her spinach, and you say, all right, Sarah, you better eat your spinach. And Sarah says, I don't want to. Uh, I said, well, you better, or else. And Sarah said, well, or else what? So what if the parent then says, eat your spinach, Sarah, or else I'm going to blow up the house? Now, that's unlikely to be a credible threat, OK? But you could make it credible, I suppose, if you're a parent. You could go and place dynamite all over the house, you know, with wires leading to a plunger. You know, and you could stand there right by the plunger and lean on it a little bit and say, all right, Sarah, now what? And maybe Sarah will eat her spinach. It's probably not a great way to get her <laughs> to, to eat nutritious food. And we've had a number of really close calls with regard to nuclear weapons, um, where some, the equivalent of a country leaning on the plunger just enough to make it seem real uh, and fortunately, so far, always being able to step back. Now, some people say, well, the fact that it hasn't happened yet proves that it works and there's not really a danger. Well, of course, if it hadn't worked, we wouldn't be around congratulating ourselves for the fact that sometimes deterrence may work. Deterrence is often used as the justification for all the nuclear weapons out there in the world, and yet um, I think the evidence is really very powerful that deterrence is a sham that it's a, um, I was going to say a joke, but it's not a joke. It's not funny. Uh, but it won't accomplish what it's supposed to. And in fact, I think there's a really good reason to fear that it will accomplish exactly the opposite. Um, and I think if we want to really learn to respond appropriately to threats, that's probably the most important one that we have to get away from.